Hello friends, my name is Satchel Like a Bag Drakes and welcome to Anti-Semantics, a show where we will be concisely looking at select points from the game at hand. This time, it's brothers. Grievously reflecting upon the death of a dear friend and the impact it would have on his trio of companions, C.S. Lewis wrote, In each of my friends, there is something that only some other friend can fully bring out. By myself, I am not large enough to call the whole man into activity. I want other lights than my own to show all his facets. Now that Charles is dead, I shall never again see Ronald's reaction to a specifically Charles joke. Far from having more of Ronald, having him to myself, now that Charles is away, I have less of Ronald. Lewis's thoughts share a kin sentiment with what Brothers attempts to convey interactively. It's a single-player co-op game developed by Starbreeze Studios in which you journey and meddle in a Middle-Earthen world, simultaneously controlling two brothers in search of a cure for their dying father. To lift a line from the compendium of the most overused game reviewer phrases in journalism, it's very easy to get lost in the world of Brothers. But what sets this title apart from a sizable amount of fantasy-oriented adventure games is just just how normal and humdrum these characters are. Typically, fantasy adventure titles demand that we suspend our disbelief to the widest degree and walk around in shoes much bigger than our own. And this is totally fine. Lord of the Rings author J.R.R. Tolkien once wrote, Fantasy remains a human right. We make in our measure and in our derivative mode because we are made. And not only made, but made in the image and likeness of a maker. Why should a man be scorned if, finding himself in prison, he tries to get out and go home? Or if he cannot do so, he thinks and talks about other topics than jailers and prison walls. Tolkien couldn't be any more wise in his observation. But there's something incomparably intimate about strolling around in your truck tailors instead of schlepping in your father's Doc Martens. In Brothers, you have no weapon or power-ups. You learn no new abilities. When you come face-to-face -face with a troll twice your size, your reaction in-game isn't a far cry from what it might be in real life. Am I safe? Am I going to survive? These questions don't come to mind as a fire-wielding warlord of Albion or something. In a world of magic and whimsy, you're refreshingly powerless, and each brother is dependent on each other to overcome obstacles. I don't want to take this analogy too far, but Brothers makes a compelling and understated argument that companionship has a more lasting value than any magic or individual strength. I'll stop there. As I mentioned earlier, Brothers is a single-player co-op title. You play as both brothers because the purpose of the title is lost if you only operate as one. Game director Joseph Ferris said, It's extremely important that Brothers is a single-player experience. It's extremely important that you bond and connect with the brothers, with the left hand as big brother and the right hand as little brother. Every NPC you come across in this title is different, and each brother's interaction with them is unique to their personality. This style of play is hinged upon the hope that the player will follow their curiosity through the personalities of both brothers and get a sense of their character. Through loss, C.S. Lewis discovered that other people in our lives have the power to bring out facets of our personality that were never fully realized on our own. Our personal character shines brighter within the context of relationship. Brothers mirrors this truth interactively, and it only becomes more obvious as you play. Though you're traversing as a mere party of two, you can't escape the role of a third spectating member. In moments of sheer codependence, you can't help but wonder how flipped the script might look if one gear rotated on its own. And it's the weight of that difference that presses on you in the final moments of this title. This partnership gets surprisingly deeper than needing two bodies to push rocks, though one could definitely view it all as a straightforward co-op puzzler alone if one so desired. There's an interesting parallel here between mechanics and in-game experience. You start off the game admittedly clumsily, as your two hands, which comfortably and instinctively control one character in just about any other game, are tasked with controlling two. This only leads to ham-fisted, hesitant actions, but what's interesting is learning to sing with that control scheme and building muscle memory out of having the brothers work together. It becomes synonymous with how two people might grow into working well together. 
One of the most memorable nuances of Brothers is its constantly changing mechanics. The puzzles never plateau or repetitively depend on old methods to be solved. Brothers will introduce a new challenge and it will never be brought up again, some being passive and some being very involved and time sensitive. The freedom to provide such a wide variety of mechanics has to do with what is called context-sensitive input. Rather than assigning a multitude of fixed actions to each button for each character, like jump, push, or lift, each character has one button with an action that changes based on the object they're next to. This lends itself to a more diverse library of puzzle solving, among other things. So, here we have two layers of challenge. You need the cognizance required to assign each brother a role in solving a problem, whether that's throwing down a rope or pushing a heavy object, and you also need the coordination to execute, whether you're swinging across a ledge tethered by a rope or turning a lever to send your brother across a life-threatening pit. Top this all off with a journey through a vast and largely unexplained landscape, these two venture through regions of solace, labor, danger, ruin, War, religion, majesty, fantasy, and so much more. Mumblecore, or Bedhead Cinema, is a young, largely American indie film genre that was birthed in the early 2000s. Directors like John Cassavetes, or my favorite directors, Jay and Mark Duplass, are major contributors to it. Mumblecore is traditionally less interested in your formal three-act story arc. In most cases, it completely bypasses your conventional plot or climax in favor of focusing on character relationships and development. It uses the word mumble in reference to the naturalistic dialogue, which can often be highly highly improvised and candid in value. Rather than every part of the script existing to establish a hero-villain or rise-fall dynamic, two characters might have an introspective, extensive conversation about the stars or existence, topics that might not serve the plot at all. It's more like a window into simulated life than a highlights reel of salt salt, sugar, salt, like a blockbuster film. To give perspective, Tarantino has one of these in each of his films, like the Charlie Brown scene in Kill Bill or the KKK scene in Django. Now, Brothers is probably the first mumblecore game I've ever played. At its heart, the genre is about cutting out the fat so that relationships take the forefront. Joseph stated that he avoided a HUD, complex controls, and a real language because it's not about the complexity. Many moviegoers label more popular mumblecore films like Away We Go as a quiet film. A lot of reviewers seem to share this reaction as they refer to their time with Brothers as a quiet play. Unique choice of words for multiple critics to be sharing. And even though this game is just a series of puzzles, many are hung up on seeing it more than just a brain-teasing exercise. Firstly, I agree. Finishing Brothers is different from finishing Super Meat Boy. The latter had me dwelling on my mechanical achievement. The former, though very mechanical still, had me dwelling on a spectator experience. Finally, Joseph is right. Things like spoken language aren't here because it's unnecessary. Inference does its job just fine. What makes music isn't the notes, but the space in between the notes. Similarly, in Brothers, cutscenes and dialogue take a back seat, because what truly matters is the engaging interactivity before and after it. Click the big subscribe button to stay on top of my newest content, or check out one of my previous episodes.